Welcome back for my third module in our demo and looking at different methods for predicting who would win individual head-to-head -head baseball games. Um, so far we've looked at the ELO-based model from the 538 website and found that that does actually a, a pretty good job, perhaps a little bit too conservative, in assigning probabilities to the favorites. We've also looked at the win probability model from Bill James that looked at the average number of games each team won um, in the, um, to then come up with a probability that one team will beat the other team. Uh, what we found with that model was that we really need to know the true winning average of um, each team at the end of that season to predict the games within that season, um, which is a really silly requirement <laughs> because we don't know the final record. If we knew the final record, we would know who won that game. Um, we also tried looking at the record from the end of the previous season that didn't do so hot. And then we looked at the record um, up to that game and found that that didn't do so hot either. So, so far the 538 model is looking pretty good. And like I said, it's a little bit conservative. So the third model that I want to look at today with you is the betting line. The betting line is a reflection of where people think um, or who people think is the favorite to win a game. Um, people bet on all sorts of things. People bet on baseball for better or worse. Uh, we might even think about betting on baseball um, based on uh, what we come up with our results from these um, analyses. Um, but um, what they reflect in a way is what we might call the wisdom of the crowd. That people are putting where money where their brain is or where their heart is. Um, and, or where their mouth is, right? Um, so you might think that the Cubs are the best team in the world, but are you, how much are you willing to bet on that? And so for a single game, if you say how much are you willing to bet on team A versus team B, that gets reflected in the betting line. And what people have found in a lot of different applications is that when we look at the wisdom of the crowd, the crowd actually does a pretty good job in aggregate of um, predicting certain estimators. So for example, people have gone to state fairs and they've said, hey, looking at this cow, can you tell us uh, what you think the weight of the cow is? So individuals, individual estimates might be all over the place, but when you look at the average of those estimates, they tend to hone in right on the right weight. Um, people have done this for a lot of different things, not just the weight of a cow. And so the question that I have for today is when we look at the wisdom of the crowd for the betting line, how does that compare to the actual probabilities, the actual outcomes of the games people are betting on? And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take the analysis we've done so far, and we're going to integrate in the probability calculated from the betting lines. So um, a couple things we need to figure out is we need to get a source of data for the betting line, and we need to know how to convert that betting line into an actual probability. Um, this information was not included in the 538 website, and I'm finding that it's actually kind of hard to find. Um, and so this is going to force us to learn a little bit about how we can use R to parse HTML files to extract information we want. We're going to do some web scraping to get access to these betting line uh, data. Okay. So as we've done so far, we're going to open up our GitHub um, issue tracker. I was looking back at the code from before, and also at the end of the last module, one of the things I forgot to do with you all was to commit and merge our branch into master. So I went ahead and did that after I signed off. Um, and so if you look at um, what we have here, I went ahead and closed issue two. Um, and if we look at our issues now, we have, we've closed our two issues. So I'm gonna create a new issue. And so we're going to then validate uh, the betting line model. And so a couple things that we need to think about, what we need to get if we think about our checklist. I was jotting down some notes earlier to pop in here uh, into our issue tracker. We need to find a site with the betting line data. We also need to figure out how to convert the betting line uh, data to probabilities. Okay. And we then need to calculate the probabilities from the betting line data. Calculate. Um, and we need to make a table um, with the probabilities of winning 
for each game. And we then need to join that table, the probabilities table. I'm going to call it the win line uh, probabilities uh, data into um, our favorite win prob uh, data frame. Okay. And then we need to plot the performance of the win line. Um, model relative to the 538 and winning percentage models. All right, cool. So I'm excited to be able to work with you to show you how we can go about extracting data from websites. We're so used to having data come to us as CSV files. Well, the internet is full of data. And if we can learn some simple tools um, like the RVEST package from the Tidyverse, we can use those tools to extract a lot of information from the internet. All right. So there we are, and I'm going to create a new branch. Um, hmm, so I'm seeing that my master is in red, which tells me that I've got some uncommitted changes going on here. So if I do git status, I see that uh, I generated a file, day two EPS. So this is a plot that I was using for thumbnails. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to my desktop. So I'll do mv day two dot EPS to my desktop. And this isn't being tracked, so it's not going to cause any problems. Um, I was using that as a thumbnail uh, to put in kind of the, the caption for uh, my YouTube videos, as well as when I put up a Twitter announcement of the new module. All right, so we're back to green. I'm going to do a get checkout uh, B, and I'm going to call it validate um, the pay line. Um, I'm going to call it so I'm going to call it uh, I'm going to so I'm going to check out a new branch uh, validate uh, betting line model alright so here we are again if we do get status um, oh, get status it tells us we're on the validate betting line model branch um, and everything is up to date and we're good to go. All right. So we need to find a website that will give us the betting line data. And so again, if we look at our 538 website, there's nothing here. So I'm going to Google for um, MLB betting line and we'll be that online. All right. So, um, a money line or betting line. Um, I guess money line is perhaps another way to to call it. Um, and let's go ahead and click on this link uh, to see what it tells us. Uh, so the next game is tomorrow night be between the Cubs and the Cardinals. Um, it doesn't actually have the betting lines in here yet. But if we look down here, it tells us a money line used in baseball and hockey takes the place of a point spread. Um, so it's based simply wagering the, on the contest based on a given price rather than a point spread. So the team wagered on has to win the game outright regardless of the score. So there's a minus sign, so say the betting line is minus 130, that'll always indicate that it's the favorite, whereas if it's a plus, that team is the underdog. And so if you bet $130, you will make $100, right? So you'll, you'll bet 130 and you'll get back 230. Whereas if the if you have if you're betting on the underdog and it's plus 120, um, then you if you bet $100, you'll get back $120. So you'll get back a total of $220. Okay, and so um, uh, so so it's a it's a it's a better payout if you bet on the underdog because of course they're not expected to make as much. All right, so this tells you how it works. Um, financially, <laughs> um, but it doesn't tell us exactly how to convert that to a probability. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and so let's go ahead and uh, click on some of these links to see what we get. Um, now here's a betting line for the game tomorrow night. Um, so St. Louis um, at Las Vegas um, is the is minus 136. So they're the favorite. 
So if you bet on the Cardinals at minus, um, if you bet $136 on the Cardinals, you'll go back $100. Whereas if you bet $100 on the Cubs, you'll get back $126, at least according to this. Um, one of the things I'm not seeing in here, however, is um, this tells us the odds uh, for, the, for the next game, but it doesn't tell us the odds for the previous games. So I'm trying to get historical data. I'd love to get data going back to 1871, but I know that's, that's a hard sell. Um, here's a site for Odd Shark. Uh, they don't have anything in here yet for uh, the upcoming game. Um, let's see, if we click on Moneyline, um, Odd Setting, just kind of looking around. Let me have a click on MLB. Um, so this, again, doesn't quite tell us what we want. Uh, maybe, no, we can't scan backwards. Um, all right, so um, again, what we're looking for is the ability to look at, say, last week's games or last year's games, but I'm not seeing it in here. Um, go back to my Google search and um, let's click here on ESPN. Data lines currently unavailable. Hmm. This, this is a problem, right? Like we know what we want for data, but sometimes it's just hard to find the data. Um, I'm just going to open up a few links. So let's try looking at this sport book review. Um, here we have the game uh, that's going to be played tomorrow night. Again, they don't have any betting line data in here, uh, but they do seem to have yesterday. Um, I've got a little calendar here. Ah, so if I go back to the 15th, which was Sunday, um, and I look and I see the Cubs versus San Diego, the Cubs were a favorite, minus 138 to 127, and the Cubs ended up winning that. Um, we then see all the betting line data um, that we have there. So let's see, um, so this is for July 15th, 2018. So oftentimes when websites make a page like this for a specific day or for a specific uh, search query, when we look at the HTML or the URL, sorry, it will embed that up in the URL. So we see date 2018, 715. So there it is. So if we go back to say 2015, 7.15, hmm, um, maybe that was All-Star Break. So let's put an 01. Ah, so 2015, we have data. If we go back to 2010, yep, we've got data for 2010. Let's do 05. Nope, no data for 2005. Let's look at 08. No data there. 09. We have data for 2009. Um, and let me just try 08 again, but with a different date because we might be hitting that all star break. So if I put in 05, 01, 2008, nothing there. But if we look at 09, we see this page. And so what this tells us then is that we can get odds data going back to 2009. So about nine years worth of data here, which is really exciting. I mean, it's not back to 1871, but still that's pretty cool. The other thing is that I can make, I can use R to generate the URLs for any date that there was a game, if I know the date, because it, it goes year, month, day, okay? So the next thing I wanna know, as I'm looking at this um, from May 1st, 2009, is that we have on the top here, Miami versus Chicago Cubs. We have uh, the win line probability, so the Cubs are heavy favorites over uh, the Marlins that day. And I wanna know, can I get the names of the teams as well as uh, the score and the betting line, okay? So the tool that we have, I'm using Safari, but if you're using uh, Chrome or Firefox, it's similar types of things. Uh, there's a there's a if I right click on the area of the website I'm interested in I can do inspect element and so this then pulls up um, the HTML that goes into making um, making that link making that spot in the table and so what I see is this div that's highlighted if I click up here that's highlighted across the, the middle here of my page this div 
um, is the part of the HTML code that's, that's representing this data. And um, if I kind of keep highlighting down, I see if I click on this div um, that I am in the score box. So what I'm looking for then is, um, so this tells me it's the final, the score. Um, so six was the total score and six, eight was the score for the Cubs. Okay, so this, this gives me my score information. Um, I'm also interested obviously in the teams. And so how do I get the teams? Um, So it seems like my divs are out in a weird order because when I click on this, it's not looking at the score, it's looking at uh, the game numbers. So if I look um, here uh, at the teams in this div, it tells me um, team 624, team name in that span, MIA, Miami. Okay. So similarly in here, we see CHC. And um, I wonder what what this opener has. So the opener must be uh, it must be hidden because it's not shown in here. Um, it, where I'm highlighting here, it's, it's showing the score, which is a bit weird. Um, so um, this must have been the opening bids, um, the opening sense, um, event line consensus. And then here we have um, the first bookings, um, where again we have the 250 and the minus 270, which I suspect corresponds to Pinnacle. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Um, consensus? Yeah, mine histories. Nah, I'm gonna hide that. Um, that 230, I think, must have been the opening bid. Okay, so what we're interested in getting is the date, the name of the teams, the scores, and then um, uh, you can see it's uh, changing the code as I hover here, um, and then the um, first information or this information here in the um, this event line book tag. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to try to extract this information from the table to then uh, get our probabilities from that win line. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and copy this because I'm going to use this as my practice. And so a library that we're going to want to use is um, our vest. Yep. And so our vest is part of the tidyverse, I believe. And I'm going to, um, you know what, for right now, I think I'm going to make a new file uh, to have something to play around with. So our script, and I'm going to say, uh, read HTML is this. Okay. And so then this is the HTML page. And if we look at HTML page, it's not going to show us much. It's going to say it's an XML document. And um, it's got a head and a body. These are the first two layers of the web page. And so I'm going to then um, Actually, I'm not going to pipe that. I'm going to keep that separate for now. And if I look back at the website, um, let's see. So the div that I'm interested in is a class called event lines. Okay, so you see if I highlight this div, it's covering um, 
pretty much exactly what I want it to cover, right? So div class event lines. And so I can do HTML page and we can do get nodes um, and then div period event lines. We just make sure. Yep, so it's lowercase, uppercase event lines. Um, I'm sorry, it's not it get, it's HTML nodes. And hmm, content delayed. So this then takes a little bit of doing uh, to figure out what exactly it is we're looking at. All right. So this now is returning the div class event lines and everything that's contained within it. And then from this, we want HTML nodes um, and we're gonna want, um, what is the div that's being described for each of the games. And you know what? Content final is probably more of what we want. And then see how we have all of these. Um, that, that the class is event holder, holder complete. So I'm gonna try, instead of doing that event lines, I'm gonna try holder complete. That didn't work. Oh, it should, it should be div period. Great. And so we see we've got the 15 divs, one for each of the games that was played um, on um, May 1st. Okay. So in here now, we have each row representing um, represented by a different node from our HTML page. So if we look at this first div that's in here, this ID 21712, um, this then should have all of the information we want. I'm right. um, just looking through here. So it's got the score, and then in here is the checkbox, but I'm not worried about that. Um, the time, the teams, right? So we want the teams, and then we want uh, the money line. And so what I'm gonna try to do is, for practice, uh, I think I can get out the first node by doing this. Yeah. Uh, great. And I'm not sure what that is, but um, I guess what we're looking at now is the content of the first node. Okay. And um, that didn't work. All right. So let's just work with that. And we can then say, get nodes. Uh, so what we want are the um, team names. So we're going to do um, span team name. Hyphen name. Get, oh, it's HTML nodes. And so this then is that line of the span. And if we do um, HTML text, we now get back our two team names. Okay. And um, if I save this as team names, I can then do team names uh, one, two. 
Okay, so this then gives me team names um, for that first game. Okay, and if I looked, if I did two here and I looked at team names, I'll get Mets and Philly, which was Mets and Philly. Okay, so we'll leave that at one for now. So team names, and um, similarly we can look. We want to look at team scores, or we're going to look at scores. And for now, uh, I'm going to copy this because I'm going to want to parse out the scores um, from that. So we're going to probably change the span team name to be um, it's up here. So we're going to look at um, total. So we're going to want... Let's try total and see what happens. Six to eight, which is the score here, right? Excellent. And now we want the money line. Now I'm going to again copy this. We'll clean this up here in a bit. Uh, we want the money line uh, for that first. Um, so this was the opener, event line opener, consensus. Uh, LDiv event line book. Okay, so we can do um, event line book, and let's see what happens when we do div uh, event line book. And so if we do money line, we get nothing. All right, so I'm going to just focus on this part. And that gives us nothing. So maybe I'm typing in the class name wrong. Uh, yep, uh, it, the L should be capitalized. All right. So this then is giving us the 10 um, event lines. If I do HTML text, we get um, the text version for all of the lines. So 250, 270. Um, is what we want. And then 245, 265 is the next one, right? So instead of doing HTML nodes, we can do HTML node for money line, and this then gives us the text of um, the money line, right? Excellent. Um, and so I'm curious what this looks like. If we do this, we get two nodes. So then event line book value. So I'm going to try to do another HTML nodes. Event line book value. And see what we get for money line. I'd like to have it output it as a vector, not just a concatenated character. And that gets it for us. Excellent. So we now get 250 and 270. 250, 270. Excellent. Just as a test, let's throw in a 3 here. What do we get for money line? 120, 128. And that's the third game there. Excellent. All right. So what we want to do is to create a function to parse um, table row. We'll say function. And then we'll say um, row, right? And so then, if we give, um, so we're going to want to give it the page and the row. And so then we're going to say um, team names is page, and then. Um, 
actually we don't want to give it the page we want to give it the rows right and so basically where we'd put it in would be right about here so we're going to want to do something like this where we then say um, we're going to want to do some type of map um, where we give it the input and we're going to ship that to parse table row okay and so then team names should spit back out row and it's going to then be this and then um, so we're going to give it scores and money line where we take this stuff out and put in row and row and then we're going to want to return Um, so then we're going to, yeah, we're going to return C, uh, team names, scores, money line. Okay. And then let's see what happens if we try this. Could not find function map. Um, so let's... Per is that package? That worked. And so um, we run map. So we have to use the per function. So let's be sure. Or I'm sorry, the per package, um, which I think we used before as part of um, the libraries that we'd been loading. Um, Anyway, we'll figure that out when we bring this in. Right now, I'm just kind of sandboxing what's going on. So we have map. Let's make that map DFR. Argument one must have names. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> so we can we can get explicit about this. Let's do team one equals team names one team two equals team names two uh, score one equals scores one score two equals scores two um, and then money line is money line uh, one I'm sorry money line one that money line two is money line so while I'm doing this, so th let me just double check that this works. Argument one must have names. So let me think. We've got this error that it, it, argument one must have names. Um, and I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, we're returning a vector here. Maybe if we returned data frame instead, that would be better. So let's put tibble in there. And so if we run this, that gives us the output that we want. That's pretty exciting. Um, a couple things that I'm going to take care of here, just because it's going to be a lot easier, is that everything here is going to be formatted as a character, which isn't really ideal. So I'm going to do as numeric score and as numeric scores. Um, and then here we've got um, the plus and minus. So if it's got a plus, I want to get rid of that. But we're going to do as.numeric and then str replace. Um, and we're going to do plus with nothing. Uh, money line. And as.numeric, str replace. Uh, plus with nothing. Money line. Uh, and this needs a second. Closing parentheses. And then a closing parentheses for the overall tibble. Great. So let's see what happens if we run all that. Empty pattern not supported. Mm. Oh, you know what? I think I've got my syntax wrong for str replace. 
and it wants the string and then the pattern and replacement. So I got this out of order. All right, so we come back here. Pattern replacement. Money line plus nothing. String. So that's the string, money line one. And the pattern is the plus sign. We're going to replace it with nothing. And I think what I need is the escape character of back back because the plus sign has a special meaning in R and that works. Excellent. So now we want to scale this up for all of the dates. And so I'm going to now cut this and bring us back to analysis.r. And I'm going to come down here um, to before we do our tidying because we're going to want to add in code to extract the web pages. All right. And what we want to do is we're going to I'm going to go ahead and run all this code that we previously ran yesterday. And I'm going to want to take the date from fav favorite winprob so favorite win prob, and we're going to, um, I'm going to pull the date column. All right, so this gives us all the dates, um, but I need to filter first on date uh, greater than um, or equal to, um, what did we say was the earliest? Um, May 2009. So I'm going to say date before 2009, 01, I'm sorry, date after that. And we're going to pull that date. And so then um, this gets us those. Um, but what you notice is that there's a lot of dates in here that are duplicated. And so I'm gonna push this through unique. And now we have one date, one value for each date. Here it's going back to 2013. Again, I can do tail to look at the end of the vector. And we see it goes back to opening day of um, April 5th, 2009. Excellent. And we need to save this as um, betting dates. And I'll just, move this around a bit to put everything on its own line. So these are our betting dates. And I would like to now get my HTML pages. So maybe instead of betting dates, I'll call this HTML pages. And we will then pipe that. And we're going to pipe that into a paste zero. Or, um, yeah, paste zero where we give it this URL. And we're going to replace that with what's coming through the pipe. But we need to remove those hyphens. So we need to do str replace all uh, what's coming through the hyphen with uh, nothingness. Let me just double check that this works. Yep, so that's can that's remove those hyphens. We now pipe this to generate HTML pages. And we get our URLs. I'm just gonna grab a random URL to make sure this works. Excellent. So that works. So we've done this now for one page, and we want to repeat it now for all of the dates in our uh, vector HTML pages. We want to be able to 
churn through all of them, creating this tibble and concatenating them all together. What I'm going to do is create a new function that I'm going to call get um, um, get money line data. And it's going to be a function. And we'll, we'll give it a URL. So we're going to create a function to read in the page, extract the nodes, and then give us the tibble for that day, those, you know, however many games there are. Um, and we're going to use a map function again to um, spin all these HTML pages into get money line data to then spit back out uh, what we're working on. So to, to test this, I'm going to create a variable URL. And I'm going to steal this from, um, I guess we had, uh, yeah, let me use 2009, that. And then we're going to then say, um, read HTML URL. I'm going to spit that out here. And this should work. And again, this is the tibble for um, uh, August 15th, 2009. That's excellent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out so it, it's not a bother. And then we'll do map DFR, where we're going to give it HTML pages. And we're going to spit that to get money line data. Um, Let's see how long this is. Uh, it's about 2,000 records long. So before I do that, <laughs> I want to double check a couple things. So I'm going to make a test data set. So I'm going to do um, tail um, HTML pages. And I'm going to then put that into here, test. Uh, I got to read this whole function in. So it's running, but it's got to go and pull, go and pull. And so it's kind of slow. Um, it tells us that there is about 64 lines. Something I'm going to put in here just to, you know, to know where things are and that things are moving, I'm going to put in a print URL. So every time through, it's going to spit out uh, the actual URL. Uh, one other thing I want to test is sometimes formatting changes over time. So I want to put in a 2013 just to make sure this all works. So what we see in the output is that for this 2013 data, it's inserted the name of the pitcher into team one and team two. And so I'm gonna come back up here to my parse table row function and use str replace all, replace. Um, and that's going to be my string. And then I need a pattern and a replacement. So the replacement's gonna, I'm gonna make nothing. I'm gonna put in a space hyphen um, dot star or maybe hyphen star and then forward slash n dot star so the um, the dot uh, reads to the end of the line it doesn't also get the new line character so I'm gonna go ahead and run this and then run this to see if we get an improved output um, and it looks like nothing's changed um, so it's a possibility that this isn't really a space or a, a, a space on the, the space bar, it might be a tab. So I'm gonna put in here a back back s and I realize this should also be back back n. Um, let me just leave that the way it is with the back back n for now. Uh, Cause it's with r you need the, the double backs, not just a single. Run this. Um, and that's still screwing up. So let's be safe and in here we'll put a back back s the meta character to match a white space. We run this and this. Uh, we see that for team one, we got it right. Okay, excellent. So we want to uh, copy this down and we'll do this for team two now. So team two, team two. Uh, reload this. And if we 
do this. Everything looks good. Okay, I'm gonna try one more date. Um, let's try this 2017. And hopefully this will work too. Excellent. So now we're ready to run this for all of the dates. And I am going to save this as um, money line. Um, yeah, I'm just going to save it as money line. <laughs> uh, so we'll save, load this into R. We'll get this going. And this is going to take a little bit because, like we said, it has to go through uh, a few thousand files. So hopefully I've got some pretty good connectivity here on my internet and it'll keep going. So I'll sit back and watch um, and see what happens. Ah, I, it stops because I, <laughs> I put in test rather than uh, HTML pages. All right, give that another shot. Well, excellent. It took about 45 minutes or so, but it finally completed running. Um, if I take a look at what Moneyline looks like, I uh, do the tail. Oh. <laughs> you know what I forgot? I forgot to put in the freaking date. Dang, Pat. That was a fail. So let's see if we can figure out how to redeem this. Um, so we're going to have to go back up here and figure out how to get date out of this. So we're going to do want to do row. HTML nodes. And let's go back and look at our HTML. And I'm going to grab that link um, as a tester. And where were we? Uh, here, HTML nodes. And so if I look in here, this is that node that we were on. And you'll see that there's an attribute rel which has the date in here. So event line odd status complete. Um, so if we look at, um, if we get status, or supposed to be div dot status hyphen complete, complete. And then we say HTML adder uh, rel and here we can plug in date as date I hate it when I do that stuff uh, we run this now we have the date fantastic um, it's formatted a bit weird um, so if we just test, if we do um, YMD, uh, that's not going to work. Um, so we could do that thing again where we just strip that crap out. Um, so let's do that. That'll probably just be easiest. str replace date comma and we're gonna back back s dot uh, star and replace that with nothingness. And we'll run these lines, let them rip. Voila. Um, I guess it might be nice to have that date be in date format. Um, so I'm going to quickly look here at lubridate, convert chr to date. All right. So, what do these people do? Uh, as date. Um, yeah, let's give that a shot. If we do as date, probably wants a capital D, huh? Yeah.
Great, and that looks right. Um, do I still have my test thing in here? Let's let's go ahead and try a test um, with money line, just to make sure everything works. And if we look at money line, we get the dates. We do tail, money line. We get everything too. Or I guess it's that's all it was was six things long, so tail doesn't really matter. Um, and so then let's come back here and put in HTML pages, and we'll go ahead and um, up. Oh, I need to take out my URL, and we'll run this again. See you in another forty-five minutes. So we all we ran all that, and everything looked good. Um, if I so we ran all that and everything looks good. Um, one of the things that I want to make sure is that I don't want to have to rerun um, this code too many times. I suspect the website's going to get pretty pissed off if I do that. So I'm going to add in here um, a a write CSV command. So I'll do write underscore CSV, and we'll do path equals uh, data money line dot csv and we'll then give that money line i'm going to go to my terminal and i'm going to do mkdir data and then i'm going to run this in my console and if i look in um, my terminal now and do ls data i see my files there so I'm going to now take all this code that I had run, and I'm going to um, copy that into a new R script. And um, hopefully you can appreciate this is not the ideal way to be doing things. Um, I, I, I guess I don't need the Wes Anderson. I don't think I need Broom. Um, that should work. Um, ideally, this this would be uh, this would be a package, or I'm sorry, this would be a function. And I would need to give it the dates from the favorite win prob to run this. But we've, we've kicked this enough that I'm just going to stop for now. And I'm going to save this as get money line data dot r. And I'm going to close that for now. Uh, and where we took that out, oh, this needs to be in that file too. Um, I'm going to copy this. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna do a write. I'm sorry, read CSV, where we will read that in uh, to MoneyLine. Oh. And I will run this. Not sure what the argument is, but anyway, we get that in. Um, and so, one of the things that we want to do is to think about how do we calculate uh, the win probability. And so, while it was running, I was doing some Google searches and found this link to how to convert odds. And if we do a search for money line, uh, we see converting money line to odds. And so if you have a minus money line, which is the favorite, uh, it's minus that number divided by minus that number plus 100. And if you have a plus, it's 100 divided by the money line odd plus 100. So let's go ahead and write a function that will allow us to do that. We'll call it get money line prob. And we'll say function, and I'm going to call it, give it x. We'll say if. Um, um, so if x is less than 100, so if it's that negative, then we're going to do uh, minus x divided by minus x plus 100. Else, um, x div I'm sorry, 100 divided by x plus 100. 
and I'm going to put this up with my other function and I'll load this into R and we'll have that here now and so what I'll do is I will do a mutate so mutate um, and we are going to create a um, So we've got money line one, money line two. So I'm going to call it money prob one equals um, get money line prob. And we're going to, so this is actually, we're going to need to do a map. I'm sorry. So map DBL, where we give it uh, money line one, get money line prob, uh, comma. I'm going to copy this down here sake of speed. All right, so close parentheses. And for now I'm gonna run that. Missing value or true false needed. Hmm, this makes me worried that something weird is going on. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do um, this and I'm gonna send it to summary see what the output looks like and sure enough uh, my money lines have some NAs in them and so um, in the uh, in my handy dandy cheat sheets here um, there's a command in I believe the civil function yes to handle missing functions to drop NA and so this will remove any rows that have um, NAs in the column so if we do drop NA pipe that over uh, this works great and so we no longer get that error and we have the values there excellent so next I would like to um, so I'm gonna steal code from up above here where we're getting the favorite and the, the probability of, of the favorite and I'm gonna add that to my mutate here um, and again, instead of w, um, WP Live, I'm going to put in money. And here, instead of win prob one, I'm going to put uh, money prob one and money prob two. Okay. And so we run this. Hmm. Oh, yep. We now have our um, favorite money one, as well as favorite money prob. And we can then do our inner join. Um, and I'm gonna join the favorite win prob with this. And we're gonna join by date team one and team two. And the output is two values, which makes me a little bit worried um, that my team one and team two are the wrong ones. Um, that, that perhaps I have things in a different order in the two different data frames. And so if I look at this, and then I look at favorite win prob, uh, and I'm gonna have it show me n equals 15. Um, I'm gonna. I'm noticing that um, up here for my money line data frame, um, I've got some two character abbreviations, whereas down here everything is a three character. So like KCR instead of KC and CWS instead of CHW, um, and so I'm gonna need to convert between the two, uh, and this is a, a pretty big pain in the butt. Um, so let me see if I can do this quickly. I'm going to create a tibble where one column is from money line and one column is from um, uh, um, what, what we've been working on and, uh, and then we'll convert the names. And so I'm afraid that this is going to require a fair amount of plugging and chugging. Um, I can get um, my fave win probability. Um, I'm going to... Um, Uh, 
and I only want the team names from the since 2009. So this is a list of those names. Uh, and so this is my, um, our old. And then money line. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, we have a CSV. I'm going to do pull team one. And we're going to do unique. And here we've got some random crap at the end um, that I don't want. And so we'll put that here. And like I said, I'm going to now uh, make a tibble manually. And so I'm going to speed along here uh, so you don't have to watch me do that. All right, so I went ahead and created a new tibble for name convert. And if we look at it here, we see that like um, Anaheim Angels and Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, whatever the names were, Arizona, Arizona, Atlanta, um, Chicago, W, Chicago White Sox, okay? So we need to add in here then a join. So we'll do inner join. Um, what will we do? We will do... Um, the pipe with name convert by, and we're going to use the team one, team one equals, um, we're going to combine that with ML. And if we look at what that generates, we then see that we've got the FWP uh, name over here in this column. Before we rename that, I'm going to run it again to convert team two. Um, get rid of that. And so now we have FWPX, FWPY. And I am going to um, uh, select out uh, team one, team two. And and we're going to rename, and of course I forget how to rename it. Um, I think it's my dplyr cheat sheet. Rename. So we're gonna then uh, rename um, fwp.x as um, team one fwp.y is team two. Uh, I think it's the other way around. There we go. And so now we've got team one and team two. Um, and um, let's see. So uh, these are all the um, what we saw before. Um, you know, like we had KC and TB as part of the money line data, and now we have uh, KCR and TBD. All right. So um, the other thing I noticed um, when I look at this output, where Team One and Team Two are Toronto and Boston and so forth. If I look at the first 10 lines of, or f let's do 50, let's, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> favorite win prob. Um, we see, so we have SDP. Uh, let me find one where there's overlap. So TBD and MD, M MIN are swapped here with MIN and TBD. So that, that's a pain in the ass. Um, and so when we do our join, if, if we had time, I'd go back and I'd, yet again, uh, change uh, ones and twos for generating the money line data. And so we're going to do team one uh, for team two, and team two um, for 
team one. Um, and actually, you know what I might do here would be to do. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it here in as I read it in, and so I'm gonna do team one equals team two, team two equals team one. Um, And you know what, that's really all the places it matters because we already have favmon1, right? Um, and, and in fact, eh, screw it, I'm not gonna do that. So if we join this now, we now have a much larger data frame um, and that's pretty sweet. So I'll also add um, a score one equals score two and score two equals score one and uh, this looks pretty good so this now has um, a lot of what we want and I'm going to then uh, select out um, these values, right? Great, and so we have our scores, whether the favorite one and the probability, and I'm going to now save this back as um, favorite win prob, get rid of that, voila, okay, and now we have our favorite win prob data frame that's got um, 24,000, 25,000 or so records since um, 2009, uh, we now want to make this tidy, um, I'm going to add here to my mutate, win line or win prob and um, this is going to get um, favorite money one favorite money prob and bum, bum, bum. and we'll then gather win prob we run this Tidy wind prob. If we look at the tail of tidy wind prob, there we go. Excellent. We can then, hmm, missing argument to function call. Oh, that comma doesn't need to be there. I'm going to then look at the overall wind probabilities. And just to make it easier to see, I'm going to arrange by mean. And what we see, um, so this is an ascending order. Uh, let me descend it. And we see that the win probabilities, which we've been working on today, um, has a similar effectiveness at predicting the uh, winner, the favorite, as win percentage using the current, and it's a little bit better than the uh, 538 model. So that's that's pretty slick. What I'd like to know is to recreate that plot that we've been looking at of um, of performance over time. We're not going to be able to go to, all the way back to 1871 because we don't have the probability data, the the win lines going back that far. Um, but uh, we should still be able to see some some pretty good stuff. And um, I think all this stuff will stay the same, except for, so we'll have WP current, and then we will also have win prob.
right. Let's give this a shot. And it's a bit hard, and for some reason in here we have four lines. Um, we probably have more than that. I forgot to do our filter. So we're going to do a filter model equals 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 FTE um, or model equals equals a win prop or model equals equals WP current and pipe that and so now we will get those lines and so those are pretty steady um, over the last nine years or so um, and I think um, We've got overall wind prob coming in here in our um, GM H line, um, and I'm going to leave that for now. Um, um, actually, let's let's go ahead and just put the same filter up here. we get effectively the same thing. So you can see the little blue line right on top of the WP current and the 538 just below that. Okay, excellent. So next we want to go ahead and look at how well the observed wind probability matches the predicted wind probability by all these models. And again, I'm going to um, add in this filter to focus the data on these three models. Otherwise, we'll have like a whole bunch of lines overlapping each other, and it's just going to be a horror show. Um, so this all, I think, looks good. I want to add in here my um, wind prob and remove these two. Add wind prob. Uh, remove that. And so this is what it looks like, um, which is pretty slick. <laughs> um, it's pretty messy, but you can imagine that most of the data that we have is really in this range between, say, 0.5 and 0.7, um, and that the three models do a really good job of replicating each other over this period of time. Um, with the 538, we tended to see it overpredict. Um, but again, that was with all the data going back to 1871. And so I need to update this to be since 2009. And so I'm going to say the three models do an excellent job of predicting the true um, true fraction of games that the favorite will win. Okay. Excellent. So that's pretty that's pretty that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so what we're seeing is that the wisdom of the crowd with this win prob model here in blue more or less matches what we'd get with the 538 model or the WP current model. So remember the WP current model assumes that we have all the information about the season on day one to know um, the wins and losses heading into that game. Um, whereas the 538 bakes in information about you know pitcher and um, home field advantage and distance traveled and, and all that kind of stuff. Whereas the wisdom of the crowd is probably taking all that into account also, as well as a bunch of homers who wanna you know bet for the home team, their favorite, their favorite team. Um, and so to see that work out that way um, is, is pretty cool. All right, um, so let's go ahead and back to our issue tracker. And we figured that out, we calculated the probabilities, uh, we made the table, we joined the wind line probabilities um, with the performance, and that's all good to go. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and um, get status. 
So we've got um, git add analysis, um, git um, get that. I want to see how big that file is before I put it. Yeah, it's pretty small. So I'm going to go ahead and git add data money line. So if that file was too big, then I wouldn't really want to store that in version control. And so I will do git commit dash m. Um, and so we will do incorporate the um, money line probability model closes number three. And I do get checkout master. And I'm going to say no. And then I'm going to do Git merge. You know what? I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> I'm going to do git checkout, uh, validate betting line model. Oops. Let's save that. And that should be good. Okay. So then I'm going to do git, git checkout master, git merge, validate betting line model, git status, git push. And so I refresh, and all is good. Excellent. So we'll be back tomorrow with the final installment of these demos looking at win-loss predictions in Major League Baseball data.